Greetings to everyone. Uh, my topic is uh, strain induced electronic and optical properties of two dimensional silicon carbide by density functional theory. And these are the outlines of my discussion. And uh, first, let me go to the introduction. Obviously, the silicon carbide is a binary compound of carbon and silicon, and the bulk form of silicon carbide is, has a wide band gap with uh, high thermal. I mean, uh, thermal uh, properties and resistance. The monolayer graphene silicon carbide can be extracted from the bulk form, and uh, the monolayer also exhibits large direct band gap and it shows uh, improved photoluminance, which can be used further in LEDs and solar cells. So, you can see the 3D and 2D structure of uh, silicon carbide and a lot of properties have been calculated by theoretical approach and we consider the external strain loading uh, regime to calculate uh, and investigate the electronic and um, optical properties of this material and uh, experimentally the AFM technique is used much but uh, which is expensive so we consider to do uh, DFT calculations to find out uh, desired properties and we use DFT GGA mm, approach implemented in a code system and uh, for that first uh, we design and module the structure and mm, relax it to find the equilibrium structure and we uh, investigate the electronic and optical properties and then uh, we apply a biaxial strain within the elastic limit uh, by both uh, tensile and compression strain and we uh, study uh, this optical and electronic properties and uh, for the uh, optical properties calculation this code uses first order time dependent perturbation theory uh, in which it uses a self consistent ground state energy to, to find the imaginary part of dielectric function epsilon 2 and further it helps to find epsilon 1 and further it uses Kramer chronic transformation to find uh, other parameters like reflecting spectra, absorption coefficient, uh, and more. And these are the you know, structural properties that we have obtained after the calculation. Mm, and band gap uh, is uh, not so close enough, but all the parameters are very close enough to the difference. And these are the electronic properties of, of uh, the undeformed uh, equilibrium structure, the stable structure, optimized structure and uh, we see the 2.32 uh, direct band gap around the symmetry point key. Uh, we see the DOS perspective uh, alongside the band diagram and uh, what we have done here is uh, we have applied the uh, the optical aspect, uh, optical of, uh, to calculate optical property we have applied the uh, light in both parallel and perpendicular directions and investigated all the parameters side by side. So, uh, these are the epsilon 1 uh, where we can see um, the parallel and perpendicular uh, incidence of light, and they are from this uh, figure, we can say that uh, epsilon 1 is positive for a whole range of the photon energy, mm, but uh, in perpendicular, we see that uh, it, uh, the spectra goes down to the negative um, value and we say it, uh, the, it has a screen plasma frequency and we can see the uh, static dielectric constant uh, value for parallel and perpendicular for parallel we see uh, about 2.1 but in perpendicular it is much less than that and this is the imaginary part of dielectric function we can see um, several peaks in perpendicular incidence uh, than the parallel incidence and uh, we see here the reflectance uh, spectra where um, we see uh, the spectra is uh, reflection spectra is um, um, in perpendicular directions of incident of light is shifted uh, towards higher energy that we can say the blue shift and uh, uh, we can say that uh, beyond the 20 electron volt uh, of uh, incidence of light, this material is uh, totally transparent and these are the absorption spectra and this is, these are obtained by the 
interaction of that electro incidence of electromagnetic wave with the electrons and holes of the systems and this is, uh, this is the refractive index uh, of both uh, kind of incident of light we see that uh, the refractive index uh, for the parallel incident of light is much than the uh, the perpendicular incidence and more thing can be investigated here and now we go to the main part we have uh, this is the figure that explains uh, us the mm, the um, the biaxial strain loading regime and obviously we provide the strain uh, compressive and tensile strain around a minus 16 percent to plus 16 percent and we see energy is very minimum at um, zero percent of strain that is means in an equilibrium state and uh, we investigate the bands and we can see the tuning of band here and um, obviously the uh, if you uh, look closer then we can see when the compression is uh, starting the slowly the band is band gap is increasing and not only that the direct band band gap is shifting into indirect band gap and at around minus 16 percent we can see a huge indirect band gap semiconductors and this is the uh, just opposite that means the biaxial tensile strain uh, just opposite happens here the band gap is reducing and at um, around 16 percent band uh, uh, gap is very very minimum and we can see um, the conduction band is almost uh, touching the Fermi level and uh, now uh, here we, we are explaining the uh, different uh, values of uh, S L and two at uh, different values of applied uh, stress strain, and uh, we see everything in clearly here. Uh, the value is changing within the changing the applied strain. We can see uh, in, the, in the equilibrium structure spectra by, um, by the black uh, lines, and further when we apply uh, different strain, uh, this uh, data is changing. And the same thing is happening for uh, the uh, mm, tensile strain when the light is uh, parallelly incident, and um, we see that uh, the spectra is uh, uh, coming at a lower value of energy. And similarly, uh, this also changing. We see the normal um, equilibrium structures, um, the e epsilon one value and when um, the compressive strain is uh, loaded there then what we can see is the value of uh, uh, static directly constant also decreasing and when uh, tensile strain is provided then just opposite happens obviously the value of static directly constant is increasing and um, it goes up to very high value and you can see the the absorption coefficient uh, data here and that also um, uh, drastically changing mm, and we can see the changing pattern here clearly in the figures and uh, uh, we, uh, we it can be seen also similarly in uh, tensile strain condition and uh, this also changing drastically and the reflectance also changes and in fact uh, the reflectance uh, value threshold value is increasing after applying the um, mm, compressive strain and uh, obviously we can say um, uh, although we apply strain then uh, also after 20 or 22 electron volt this is again a transparent anyhow and same thing can be seen here in this case the um, obviously reflectance threshold is uh, a little bit uh, shifting and uh, refractive index and we can see here the, the refractive index for the compressive strain when light is parallel incidence decreasing here when it is compressed and uh, it is increasing when it is uh, uh, elongated I mean the tensile strain is provided and uh, now we, we will discuss what happens when light incidence perpendicularly and uh, almost the uh, same kind of result we can we see but the fluctuation is a little bit smaller in this case and uh, same thing we can see for the tensile strain and uh, uh, for um, uh, for the compressive strain in uh, perpendicular incidence of light we can say that the um, value of static directly constant is almost uh, 
not changing but we can say that the values are uh, going in more uh, um, negative values are within the range of uh, uh, 7 to 15 we can say um, more uh, negative uh, values it is achieving that means uh, we can say the more plasma frequency we can see and uh, same thing is happening here for the tensile strain but just almost just opposite we can see and uh, we can see the absorption coefficient here uh, the values are changing here for the probably glow incidence of light also mm, and uh, same thing we can uh, observe here when mm, we apply tensile strain and uh, uh, these are the spectra the refracting spectra we can say that uh, Mm, almost uh, uh, same kind of changing is happening here mm, and we can see the mm, the reflectance uh, is uh, peaks are much increasing when when we apply the compressive strain we can see that and uh, just opposite happening when we um, apply the compressive strain the refractive index is uh, um, spectra is uh, decreasing and uh, uh, refractive index is increasing and we can see that now the refractive index uh, this is for tensile strain we can see that the values are uh, uh, increasing up to uh, very high value than the equilibrium structure and it is going up to 1.7 and more and uh, it, it suggests that uh, refractive index can be also uh, can be achieved at high values uh, after uh, by uh, applying the tensile strain and so on so that was the main result part and now we are at conclusion and we see that uh, this uh, monolayer is very stable uh, with a uh, good value of cohesive energy and uh, the electronic band structure displays the direct band gap semiconductor obviously with high band gap and uh, with value of threshold energy we see in optical result is much greater in perpendicular direction than in uh, of light than um, parallel incidence of light and uh, electronic band gap uh, can be easily altered by the by actually strain loading and strain also can uh, load uh, can um, alter uh, different other optical parameters um, and these are the conclusions and uh, future work obviously we can check it uh, experimentally and we can check other properties in experimental way uh, by using other approach uh, other theoretical approach also maybe and uh, these are the references and I want this is the acknowledged part and I am grateful I am very grateful to Super Computer Centers and uh, my supervisors and all uh, people who involved on this. Uh, thank you.